前一天关键对话的上集，我们为您专访到了半导体女王苏姿丰，谈及到 AI PC 的新趋势。而最精彩的下集内容更是进入到深水区，也就是 AI 资料中心，超维和辉达的正面对决。对此，苏姿丰将怎么吸引更多的客户，还有开发者来到超维阵营？请看我们的专访内容。And we've talked about your vision on AIPC, but on the other hand, I know the performance in data center for AMD is also very strong, especially your new product. Its name is Instinct MI300 series have received huge success, and I know you have an advantage called pervasive AI. Can you tell me how would you compete in the market? Yeah. So uh, when we look at the next ten、um, years. Uh, we see tremendous growth in AI, and especially when you think about the largest cloud data centers, you need the most powerful chips. So,、uh, MI300X has been our fastest-growing product、um, in our history, and it's really because it's the highest-performing product from an AI、uh, standpoint, especially for、uh, new inferencing applications. So, you know, we like to think that our job is to uh, really uh, push the limits on new technology, and that's what we're doing with our Instinct product line. And as I look forward, you know, we think this marketplace for、uh, you know data center accelerators can be、uh, over four hundred billion dollars in terms of the overall market size by the time we get to twenty twenty seven. So it's a huge opportunity, and it's a very very strategic opportunity for AMD. How do you see that your competitor competitor is also working very hard on on their new chip? You know the way I think about it is this market is so big. You need all different types of chips, and、um, you know our view is that there's not just one size that fits all. Actually, depending on which workload you're trying to、uh, run, whether you're a large enterprise. Or you're a cloud manufacturer, or、uh, maybe you're a mom and pop shop that are, you know, just thinking about starting with AI. You need all different kinds of capabilities, and that's actually what we mean by pervasive AI, which means that you know you'll have AI in every part of、um, your uh, cap- your uh, your devices, and that's sort of AMD's specialty is that we have end-to-end AI capability. Could you talk more about the pervasive AI? I think that is very special for AMD. Yeah, pervasive AI is the idea that you will have AI、um, everywhere in your devices, and、uh, we like to say whether in the client devices, like today we talked about AI PCs. I think everyone is going to want to have an AI PC because it will make you more productive and more capable. Or you talk about in the edge, whether you know、uh, this morning we talked about. Some medical applications that are using AI, and some industrial applications that are using AI, and your automotive and cars are all using AI. That's part of pervasive AI.、Um, and then you have the largest,、um, uh, the largest、uh, AI capabilities when you're training these big models, so that they can really be、uh, the next、uh, ChatGPT type models. So all of these are the technologies that are necessary. For pervasive AI, and AMD is、uh, really capable to put that end-to-end AI story together. You know, if you think about、uh, medicine and healthcare, that's one of the areas where I think AI can be extremely impactful. Or automotive, I think we see AI can be extremely impactful、uh, and capable、um, at the edge. And as I said, you know, data center and a client are the other pieces. And what we want to do is really connect all of these pieces together. You you will see AMD in some automotive applications, and you see AMD across、um, a number of embedded applications in industrial as well as、uh, you know healthcare as well. To win market share, we know that development community is very important for developers. Yeah, and I would like to know your strategy to attract more developers. I think the most important thing for a developer strategy is to have an open ecosystem. And for our AI capability, we think about having you know open ecosystems where many people can contribute、uh, to the overall ecosystem. So、uh, we work very closely with developers and、uh, you know software developers as well as those in the community、uh, to build up、uh, that capability. And、um, our ecosystem has gotten a lot stronger over the last few years. I see、um, you form an alliance. Could you talk about it? 
Yeah, so we have um, a few different alliances. Uh, the um, recently last week we announced something called the um, UA Link. Um, alliance and the purpose of this alliance is actually to bring together the uh, the top um, the top cloud and system companies and device manufacturers so that we can have an open link to bring together all of these large um, AI uh, you know GPU clusters so that uh, you know we have uh, the highest performance and very high resiliency and if I really give you the overall picture of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, our goal is to make sure that you have the strongest AI capability across um, CPUs, GPUs, and networking. And for that, you do require um, close partnerships and alliances. And so uh, we really believe in that, um, that open ecosystem. Yeah, so the open approach is quite different from like CUDA. So do you think that CUDA is a moat right now? I don't believe in moats. Um, what I do believe in is that uh, it's important to have choice. And from that standpoint, um, I think the, uh, the software ecosystem, you know, when you think about AI developers today, they actually want choice in terms of their hardware. And they're using many different types of hardware. And so um, you know, the work that we're doing around our Rockham software stack, the work that we're doing with um, some of the other important frameworks uh, like uh, PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow, all of that is so that we can create this open ecosystem uh, going forward. Andy has grown momentum in many segments, like in PC, gaming, etc. What is the main growth momentum for AMD in the coming years? Well, uh, the number one priority for AMD is AI. So think about AI as the overarching priority for us. And then within that, um, you know, the data center is extremely important. Uh, we have made so much progress um, in the cloud and in the enterprise area, and we're continuing to focus in that area. And we also like very much um, you know, uh, you know, PCs and embedded as growth areas for us. But overarching across all of that is AI. We're investing um, significantly in AI. Uh, one of the things I announced today uh, was that we're accelerating our roadmaps, expanding our roadmaps uh, for AI accelerators going forward. And I believe that this is the most important um, segment for technology you know, over the next 10 years. Do you think AI will make PC cool again? I do. <laughs> I do. I think AI PCs, AI will make PCs more important. Uh, it really, you know, PCs have already always been an essential part um, of our life. Uh, but this will actually give PCs, you know, another aspect of becoming our best personal friend. And I want to know, how do you perceive the growth potential of AI market in a long time? And I would like to know your idea about the supply. Is the supply healthy for high-end GPU? Well, I would say, uh, you know, the AI market is growing much faster than anybody expected. Um, you know, our view is that um, over the next five years, we can grow um, easily greater than 50% on um, an annual growth rate. And that gets us to, uh, you know, 400 billion by the oh, time we get amazing. to 2027. So huge growth opportunities. And, you know, in terms of the overall supply, um, I think the semiconductor ecosystem always comes together and builds enough uh, capacity and capability once we forecast what's going forward. So uh, clearly, uh, we've made a lot of progress um, you know, over the last 12 or 18 months to increase the capacity for uh, high-end GPUs. And I, I think it's much better than before. And we'll continue uh, to make progress uh, going forward. But the demand for GPUs is very, very high. <laughs> Do you think we need more fabs? Uh, we definitely need more capacity, for sure. Thank you so much, Lisa. 今天 Lisa 告诉我们 ，AI 的需求真的非常的庞大，不管呢是在云端还是消费者端，都非常的有强大的动能，没有任何的一家厂商可以吃下全部的市场，也因此在未来半导体的需求持续畅旺。以上资讯就提供给大家了，我是志杰，关键对话，我们下次再见，拜拜。